Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we're going to be doing the So Long for the Twin Lakes two-piece. The Twin Lakes two-piece is our new pattern that can be sewn as a bra and underwear set or a swimsuit. We have a video out, an intro video, where we talk about this and the other pattern we just released, the Gia Surf suit, um, in more detail so you can check that out if you want. For this video, we're going to be sewing it as a bra and underwear set, and we're using this lovely cotton jersey from Miracle Fabrics with little cherries on it. It's so cute. This is a, I'd say, confident beginner to maybe intermediate level sew. A lot of it is totally achievable for a new sewist. The hardest things are going to be sewing with a knit. Sewing with knits can be a little intimidating, and um, some of using the strap hardware can be a little bit challenging but we take you through all of the steps and we totally believe in you and we share some tips and tricks along the way so i think that this would be a great uh first project for if you're like looking to try out knits this could also be a really great first project so yeah let's get started so something to note when you're cutting out your fabric is that on these pattern pieces you'll see an arrow for direction of greatest stretch normally you would see a grain line and it's usually running vertical on the piece but this is horizontal and it's the direction of the greatest stretch of your fabric and that's how you want to line pieces up when you cut them so here's my fabric i have it folded in half over here and then here's the two selvages and if you just stretch fabric with your hands in both directions you can feel generally the crosswise stretch this way, kind of going between the two selvages, is gonna have the most stretch. And on certain fabrics, it'll be more pronounced than others. You do need a, a fabric with four-way stretch for this set. On, yeah, on some fabrics, you'll find that there's very little stretch going in this direction, but a lot going in this direction. And you just wanna make sure, because when you're working with knits, this is generally the direction that is going around the body. So that's where we want the stretch to be, not going up and down, which the piece is required to stretch a lot less when it's on our body going in this direction. Another thing to note, if you're working with a thin jersey, it wants to roll like this after you cut it. And it's okay, it's just frust it's harder to work with and it's a little frustrating. A couple things you can do to combat this is that after I cut my pieces, I like to fold them up so that they're sitting kind of flat like this and this is my one of the bands that when I'm ready to sew with it I'm going to unfold this. Another thing you can do is right before you're about to sew your piece you can give it a hot steamy iron press and that will flatten it out a little bit. It's easier when you start to sew. We've just got a couple prep steps and the first one is going to be to snip in at all notches. Notches are these little lines on your pattern piece. They're reference points or spots that you need to match up and we just need to snip in on the fabric so that we can find those later. The other thing we need to do is mark our darts. So what I like to do is cut up one dart leg. We're going to mark our darts on the wrong side of our front top front A. So you're just going to fold your dart back so you have that little you have your little triangle exposed and then you'll use whatever marking tool you have to line up the pattern piece perfectly and then just draw your dart in and you'll repeat that on both sides and if you are lining your top you'll need to repeat that with your lining piece as well step one involves piece D these little strap loops and we need our 3 8 inch wide elastic. So I have these wrong side facing up and the elastic will just align with this outer edge. You could cut your elastic into two pieces but um, I'm just going to butt them up against these two strap loops up against each other so that I can sew them all at once. We're not stretching this elastic at all as we sew. So what I'm going to do is take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to use a zigzag stitch I'm going to stitch down the center of the elastic, going all the way down. And this is overlapping that edge of your fabric, so you're going to catch your fabric underneath. I'm going to separate these two, so we'll work on one at a time. Now, we're just going to roll our elastic over once, roll our elastic over one more time, and then we're just going to add some clips to hold it in place. Now we're gonna stitch down the center of our elastic again. You'll have this side facing up, so don't stitch it with this side facing up. 
we have that done. And now that all that's left is to trim away this excess. So I'm just getting in as close as I can with my scissors. If you have duckbill, those duckbill shaped applique scissors, you can use those here. Um, to it's easier to get in close. Uh, I don't have those, so I just do this. But then you can see you have a really cute um, strap loop here. This is going to be folded in half, so you won't see that backside. And it's nice because it's just covered, the elastic is covered in your fabric. We'll set these aside and um, we'll pick them back up later. Now you're going to grab your top back B piece, and I've got it right here, right side facing up. You can tell the top edge of your back piece because it has two sets of double notches right here and the lower edge is just has one set of double notches at the center. So we're going to grab our strap loops and right sides together. So this is the right side of our strap loop. The wrong side has, we can see that edge. Um, you're just going to line them right over the, right between the double notches. We're going to stitch those in place a quarter of an inch from the edge just right here and right here. Here's that sewn and now we'll just set this aside and pick it back up later. Next up we're going to be sewing up our darts. So, so we want to match up these dart legs and I like to use pins for this and I'm pinning towards starting at the center and pinning towards the side so that this is the opposite of the direction we'll be sewing so it'll be easier to remove your needles if you pin in this direction. So I'm just matching up those legs. So now you're just going to sew up the dart. Here I have the darts sewn up and um, now I'm going to press them down and give them a steam but I wanted to show you them pre-pressed so you can see how wavy the fabric is. If your fabric is able to be pressed it's probably, if you're working with a thin jersey like this it's going to get a little bit wavy and giving it a steam with the iron is going to smooth it out so I'll show you how that looks. Here's how much nicer that looks after it's been pressed so as you can see it's like not really wavy anymore. If you're working with swim fabric, you can't really give it a hot press, but you can always test a little scrap of fabric, but basically you can do your iron on a really low setting and then use a cloth of some sort over it. Um, don't press directly onto the nylon fabric, but you can do a cloth over it and still use the steam to be able to press seams lightly. Okay, so I have my dart sewn and I also repeated that with my lining because I'm going to line this. Now the optional lining step that we are going to do is to pin our lining and our main fabrics right side, wrong sides together going all the way around. So I'll just add some pins to hold everything in place and then I'm going to baste. Okay, so we're going to baste a quarter of an inch from the edge going all the way around. And just make sure your pieces are wrong sides together so that on the back side you're not going to see any like open darts. Okay, so here is my piece, my front piece with joined to my lining. And now we're just going to sew this as one. So if you're not adding a lining, you don't need that last step. The sewing steps will all be the same. Um, the next step we're grabbing our top front finishing band C. I have it right here and you'll notice there's a notch just on one side so we don't have it on this side. That notch is going to go right sides together with the notch at center front of our top and then it will wrap around to meet the top here on each side. As you can see the top finishing band is shorter than the neckline of our top so we'll have to stretch to sew it in place. So I'm just stretching it out so I can put some more clips in place and that um, that the band will kind of be portion proportionately distributed around the neckline. So we're going to take this to the sewing machine. We're going to sew 3 eighths of an inch from the edge going this way and again we're going to stretch it as we sew. So we're just stretching it so that the band has reached the width of the neckline. We're not stretching it extra or anything like that. Okay so there is that sewn and we've got the seam allowance pushed up towards the band and now we're going to wrap the band around that seam allowance so we'll just fold it around and we're looking at the front right now we're just adding some pins and clips okay so here I have those side seams sewed and I pressed my seam 
allowance towards the back on both sides. We'll set this aside for a minute and work on the straps. Next up we'll be working on with our strap E pieces and this is the piece that is the strap and then it goes around the sides and back of the top all in one. So you have two of these and you'll notice some notches on them. So there's a notch right here on this one short end. There's a notch here that is where this is going to meet the side seam. This notch is going to meet this point where um, your strap begins, your binding ends and your strap begins. Um, and then this chunk of it is the strap. Here's our end that has notches on it and we're just going to right sides together. We are pinning our, our piece together right sides together matching up that notch on the short end and we're just going to stitch using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, here's that sewn and now we're going to join elastic to the ends of our straps. So, Okay, so here's our center back seam. Here is the notch that is going to match up with our side seam and then here is that notch that is going to meet, meet up with that upper corner where the strap starts. We are just going to, we are going to add elastic to this part that is going to be the strap, so I'm just going to pin or clip this elastic in place. We're not stretching it at all. We're just aligning it with this edge that has the notch on it, and we'll, just like we did with the strap loops, we're going to zigzag stitch down the center of the elastic, catching the strap piece underneath. And you're going to repeat that on both sides, so you'll do it on this side as well. Here's that sewn up, and now we're going to pin it to our top. So this gets pinned right sides together. This notch meets up with this corner right here, where the elastic starts. And then this elastic part is loose, because that's going to be the strap. And then that first notch, this part is of the... Um, of piece E is shorter than the body of the top so this notch matches up with that side seam and then the seam matches up with this notch at center back. Make sure to tuck your strap loop down so that it's sandwiched in between the seam so this gets matched up with that and then we'll come around tuck that strap loop in and then this matches up with the side seam. And then again, this matches up with that upper corner. Now I'm going to add a few more clips in for good measure. Okay, so now that's all pinned in place. We're going to sew using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're going to start right here. We're going to sew down this side of the front and then we're going to sew across the back and then we're going to sew up the other side to where the elastic begins. So here's what that looks like sewn. It's um, similar to the technique we used when we did the front binding. Now we're going to, so similar to how we did the front binding we are, and the strap loop, we are going to start at one strap and we'll fold it under once fold it under a second time and give it a pin work our way down the strap when you get to this corner you'll fold the elastic down and then back behind and you want to make sure you're fully encasing that little corner right there And then we'll move on to this side seam. So we're pushing the seam allowance up and we're folding the strap down and around. If this is like sticking up and has a lot of bulk, then I would just give it a little snip. Again, you're going to be pulling this slightly as you put your clips in because um, you want it to go under the sewing machine flat. So. And then we're going to work our way down the other strap. So just like we did before, we're folding it down and then around one more time. 
Okay, so now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and sew. We'll start at the end of one strap. We're going to zigzag stitch down the center of the strap. When we get to the body, we're just going to shift our stitch over slightly so that, again, we're stitching right over this ditch. With our zigzag stitch straddling this ditch, and then we'll stitch around the body, pulling it flat as we go, going all the way around. And then you'll come back up the other side, stitching down the center of the elastic. Okay, here's that stitched, and just like before, we have this excess that we're just going to now carefully trim off, and I'll just start at one of the straps and work my way down. Okay, there is that done. That's what it looks like on the wrong side, and what it looks like on the right side. Now we're going to sew these strap loops. So our first step will be to just push it upwards, and we're just going to stitch right here to anchor this going upwards. So we're just sewing through that um, across here and you'll repeat that on both sides. Okay, so here they are sewn up and now we're gonna grab the little loop from our kit and put it onto our strap loop. And then this will be folded down and we're just going to catch this end underneath. We're gonna stitch right here just below this fold so that we're not stitching through a ton of layers of our strap loop, it's just right below here and we'll repeat that on both sides. Here's that stitched into place. Okay, so now we're gonna add these sliders and you'll just, with the right side of your strap facing up, you're gonna push it through one opening and then it goes back down through the second opening and then you slide this down on your strap. This loose end is gonna go right sides together, it's going to go through your loop. And then you can pull that up. Now this strap needs to go up through that first opening. And so it can sometimes be a little tricky because there's a lot of fabric. So what I like to do is like pull on either side so that I've got a little space. And then you can kind of shove it through. Sometimes tweezers are helpful here. Okay, now that's through, we need to thread it down through the second opening. And if you're, if you got like a little bit of frazzled ends here, like from pulling it through, you could just give it a little trim. Even maybe cut it on an angle, see if that's helpful. And I'm just shoving it back through the second side. Cool. And so now... This end, you could clean this up if you can get an angle at all. Um, this end is going to be stitched to the back loop. So this is the loop that's on the inside. You're just gonna zigzag stitch back and forth. You can pin this in place and try your top on and then move the straps around if you think they're, you know, you have a lot of excess strap or you want it, um, yeah, if you want the strap to be shorter, um, you can play with that placement at this time. Okay, so here's those straps done and that little part stitched down. Now we're going to just work on this bottom band and we'll be finished. You're going to grab your pieces, pieces G and F, and we are going to pin them together, right sides together, along the short ends. Now you're going to stitch each side using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Here's that stitched, and now we are going to fold it in half lengthwise and give it a press. Okay, so here it is pressed in half, and we're going to pin it to the bottom of our top. So there's a single notch in the front and a double notch in the back. The double notch matches up with the double notch on the back. We're going to pin this right sides together, matching up the raw edges. So I'm just going to loop that over. <clears throat> the side seams match up with the side seams and then you've got a notch at center front to match up with these notches at center front and to be clear in this step you're pinning through three layers so two layers of your folded in half lower band and then your top 
going to add a few more pins in for good measure. Now we're going to join this lower band to our top, but we're going to leave a little two inch opening. I like to leave it on the back because um, just in case it, you can kind of see it once it's sewn up, it's on the back rather than the front. So I'm going to stitch around and then leave this two inch opening. You'll use your 3 8 inch seam allowance here. Okay, so now we are, our last step is to add our half inch wide elastic to this channel that we've created at the bottom of our top piece. Um, in your instructions, you've got suggested elastic lengths for each size, and you can also just stretch the elastic like around your waist and feel what length feels really good. It's just right up on your rib cage, just under your bust, where that band is going to sit. Um, but keep in mind that this suggested elastic length includes one inch so that you can overlap the ends and sew it together into a loop. So just whatever you come up with that feels good, make sure you add an inch. Um, so we left that little two inch opening back here. I've got my elastic and I'm just going to attach a safety pin to one end. And then I will just feed the elastic into starting on one side. Just start inching the elastic around by squishing that safety pin through the channel and you want to be careful to not twist it along the way. You can always untwist it but it's easy if you just are a little bit aware when you're inching this through. So after you pull the other end of the elastic out you can take the safety pin off and then you could just use it to um, hold those two ends together while you double check that your elastic didn't get stripped or didn't get twisted along the way. So I'm just feeling around to make sure before I sew it into a loop. So once you're all good, you can take this over to the sewing machine and you'll overlap these ends by half inch and then you'll just zigzag stitch to secure this in place. Okay, so now that is sewn up into a loop and I'm just going to pull to kind of start to distribute the um, elastic around. Now we're just going to close up this little opening that we left where our band is joined to our top. So you'll just sew right here to shut that. Be careful not to stitch on top of the elastic so just try to avoid it. So here is our top done. You have a couple options. You don't need to finish this seam in here because these knits are not going to fray but if you want you could serge this edge, you could trim it down if you wanted. You could also top stitch it if you um, want to add a little bit of extra security. You could top stitch along here, catching that seam allowance underneath. Uh, yeah, so that is it. And now we're going to move on to the bottoms. Okay, so now we're going to get started on the back. We're on this first step here. So I've got my bottoms front and back. So I've got my front and back here. We're just going to pin them together, right sides together at the crotch seam. And then you'll sew across here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. A little trick when you're sewing these small things on a thin knit, sometimes the your feed dog wants to pull this beginning part in when you start sewing. Something that will help you is to get a hold of your thread and hold it taut as you start to sew. So. And that's it. Okay, here I have that sewn, and now I'm just going to open it up so that my front and back are exposed. And then we have our crotch lining piece. So you'll notice that there's a front and a back, and the front has a notch on it. It's because these two halves look really similar, like it, if you were to just look at this piece without the label, it'd be hard to tell which side goes to the front and which goes to the back. So the notch is just your reference that that's going front. Um, you could also mark it if you wanted, but these notches here match up with the crotch seam. So I'm just going to place my crotch lining. These are wrong sides together, so I've got I'm looking at the right side of my crotch lining and the wrong side of my bottoms. And I'm just lining this up so that these are on top of the crotch seam. Voila. Now I'm going to pin it in place. Now we're going to base this in place. We'll go a quarter of an inch from the edge going down each side. If you want, you can go across the top as well. Um, you won't really see it when you're wearing it, but 
you know, personal preference. So what you can do if you want is to just go a quarter of an inch from the edge going all the way around your crotch lining to secure it in place. Here I have that sewn so you can see it better on the wrong side. Um, now, right sides together, we're going to fold our backs up um, so that it's right sides together with the front and back and we're going to pin them together at the side seams. And you can see how it wants to curl under. You just have to be patient with your fabric and uncurl it and use more pins. <laughs> Now I'm going to sew this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, next up involves our waistband, our waist finishing band, and we're just going to fold it in half right sides together, and we'll match up the short end and stitch those together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so here is that waistband sewn, and here are my bottoms. The matching points on our waistband are the center back seam, and then we also have a notch. And you'll notice that there's only a notch on one side of the waistband and that is because we use this technique where we're going to be trimming away this side after we sew. Um, so first we're going to match up that center front, uh, that notch with the notch on the center front of our bottoms and then we're going to bring it around and we're going to match this seam up with our notch on center back. And as you can see the waistband is smaller than the bottoms. So we need to stretch to sew. So we're just going to, what I like to do is grab a hold of front and back and then stretch these out to find this matching point. And then we'll add a pin. And then we'll repeat that again so that the waistband is distributed evenly around the waist of the bottoms. And you want to make sure that your seam allowance is put, pressed towards the back. Now we're going to repeat that on the other side. So there we have our waistband pinned in place right sides together. We're going to stitch all the way around the waistband using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Here's what this looks like sewn and now we're going to press our waistband up and away and then back down. If you're working with a fabric that you can press then I recommend pressing the waistband up in this step. So you'll be pressing the waistband and the seam allowance up towards the waistband. I'm going to go do that really quick and I'll be right back. So here that is pressed up and now what we're going to do is press the seam allowance. So we're bringing this waistband up and around our seam allowance to create a binding. We have excess fabric here that's going to be trimmed away because you obviously don't need, you're not going to be stitching down here. Um, what we're going to do is just pin it in place going around the waistband. We're going to stitch from the right side of the of our bottoms and we're going to use a zigzag stitch just overlapping this seam. It's going to catch this seam underneath and then we'll trim it away afterwards. You're also going to need to stretch as you sew because you don't want to sew these wrinkles. Just the way that we had to stretch in our last step, we'll stretch in this step just so that it's flat. You don't need to like stretch it out, but you'll just stretch it so that it lays flat as it's passing under the presser foot. Okay, here's that sewn, and as you can see, it looks really nice on the right side, and we just need to trim this away on the wrong side. If you have those duckbill embroidery scissors, that makes it a lot easier to get into these flat spots, but I'm left-handed. I I'm sure that if I looked around online I could find some left-handed duckbill scissors, but um, I'm yet to find them. So I'm just carefully using regular scissors and it works fine. It gives you a pretty nice finish on both sides without having to do any extra folding, which would create another layer of bulk. Now we're going to move on to the leg bands. The next steps are going to be pretty much identical to what we just did with this. We're just adding the leg finishing bands. The one thing is that on your piece you'll see that you have a you have a notch right here and then you have labeled front leg and back leg that's because the back is a little bit bigger than the front so proportionately to like um, distribute the, the band we need to put this side on the front and this on the back that I like to keep track of which is the front and which is the back I've got my pieces not fully cut out <laughs> 
so so you can see this is the front side this is the back side I'm just going to use my pen that has a removable this is like a heat removal ink and I'm just gonna put an F on the side that's the front so that I know that this this bit of this is going to go be pinned along this edge so I'll start by sewing these together right sides together um, along the little short edge okay so now we're gonna pin this right sides together to the leg of our bottoms and we want to match the notch up with the side seam and the seam where the band is joined together will match up with the crotch seam so I'll start by making sure it's done up the right way. So this goes to here. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with the waistband where we'll just stretch it out and put a bunch of pins in place and we'll stitch it. We'll just stitch all the way around using a 3 inch seam allowance. That's sewn, so now we are going to wrap this around the seam allowance like we did with the waistband and stitch it and then repeat that on both legs. There's those sewn and we just need to trim away the seam allowance. And there you have it, our finished bottoms. They're so cute. And if you were making the thong, if you're making the thong, the process is pretty much identical. The shapes are just different. So as you can see, the back is just shaped differently. Um, and yeah, but the sewing steps are the same, and I swear these are the most comfortable bottoms in the world. Here's our finished set, and for this video we did make the full butted underwear, but I also made the thong out of this fabric, and it's kind of cute if you wanted to make yourself multiple sets um, so that you have different types of underwear with the same fabric. I think that's pretty cute.